Hi, everybody. This is Bob Berman for SLU. I'm here with Matt Francis, the director of Prescott Observatory, and we are here exploring the consequences of the current wild activity on the sun. The sun is erupting. The Geophysical Institute has predicted auroras as a consequence, not just on the moderate to act actually on a high level, which is very, very rare. So we're here in Alaska for SLU. We're actually part of the Old Farmer's Almanac tour for the Aurora. We have with us some 40 somewhat people, uh, people, 40 something people. And uh, we've been observing the effects of the sun's recent eruptions. Solar storm AR1944, which sent an X-class solar flare towards Earth. Well, since then, that made all the headlines. Since then, the sun has rotated around, and the same sunspot grouping, the same storms are hurling material towards Earth. And as a consequence, we are here in Alaska observing the effects firsthand. The skies are erupting with auroras. Matt, what is your impression here with me? I am very excited to be here and to see the spectacle of nature, to actually stand outside. It's, it, it is uncomfortable to be out in, you know, zero degree weather to watch this, but it's, you know, when it starts happening, it, it, it's odd because you're uncomfortable at first, you're cold, and then the, guy, the, the, the sky begins to glow with the auroral glow. And as that happens, your discomfort and feeling completely goes away because you're just astonished at what's happening up in the sky. Yep, the temperatures are varying around zero each night. And the auroras that we're seeing now, what I show you, have just happened. This was earlier today. And this is just currently uh, erupting on the sun. This is the type of storm that the experts are predicting will last for two days, two days of consequences. So we're showing you the effects that we observed a few hours ago from central Alaska, is, uh, far from any city. And we have set up a three-person slew uh, team. I should uh, mention specifically, I'm Bob Berman. I'm, this is Matt Francis and Anjali Bermain as well, acting as photographers, uh, uh, slew's agents to try to, and I'm happy to say, successfully capture the effects of the sun. We have recently been at the Prescott Observatory bringing you live images. And uh, Matt, tell us about the eruptions on the sun that we've been broadcasting here at SLU. Well, I think it's interesting that we, you know, we've been broadcasting these weekly shows uh, to update on the solar activity that we've had. And Bobby mentions uh, the old sunspot, 1944. This is its third iteration coming around us. And this, you know, what we're looking at now, this aurora was produced um, because of, of a CME that was ejected I think two days ago, an X-class solar flare, and it was a very glancing blow. This wasn't even directed at Earth, and yet it still, it still gave us auroras of this magnitude, of this color. It's uh, it, it, an amazing thing to see here. We were wondering when the sun would finally uh, start acting up again, because after the most prolonged solar minimum that any living researcher has seen, 2005, 2006, 2007, periods of hundreds of days at a time without a single sunspot, and finally the long-awaited new sunspot cycle, number 24, was expected to give us its maximum in spring of last year. Now we're talking about nine months ago. Instead, it was a very wimpy maximum and then it quickly declined again making solar experts think what is going on with the sun is it an extended period of quiet are we perhaps even in the beginning of a i'd say almost catastrophic quiet period where the sun's heartbeat essentially stops as it did from 1645 to 1715 when the sunspot cycle and its storms came to a stop and grave consequences here on Earth. The English Channel had icebergs, the canals of Venice froze, colonies had to be abandoned in Greenland and Iceland, the cod fishing industry collapsed. It was a terrible time for people in the colonies here in the United States, and that's because when the sun's storms diminish, uh, Earth gets colder. But what has happened instead is that 
activity has now, in the last month or two, increased, showing us that we're going to have a double peaked maximum with the maximum last year, then there was a decline, and now a sudden increase in activity again with, and we can see what the consequences are, tremendous auroras up here in central Alaska. Yes, and you can see these photos that we're loading right now are showing the sort of the, a sequence of what happened to view the aurora. We, we go out at 11 and 3 a.m., 11 p.m. to 3 a.m., and the sky just begins to glow, sort of a, a diffuse glow. And as it does, in these pictures, northeast, and um, you can see the it glows, and then it begins to brighten. And as it brightens, it becomes more defined, and the, the curtain-type effect of the aurora really becomes defined in, in, a, in about an hour's time. And, um, and then at the bottom, the aurora begins to actually dance move at, a, at a, a rate of speed that's, that's surprising. Um, you really see it, and, and it, just, it just it captures your attention. And like I said, it, whatever, whatever way, and you can see here how it's brightening across. We're now looking northwest. And so it started in the northeast with that small little sort of diffuse blob of light, and it evolved into this huge auroral display that co covered the entire northern part of the sky. So we are seeing current auroras. This was taken just earlier today. These, all these images that we're showing you from away from any cities in Alaska. Again, this is a three-person team responsible for this, part of a larger umbrella group of people seeking the northern lights. We've brought them here uh, under the aegis of the Old Farms Almanac, and we're uh, just astonished to see this. But uh, Blue, which has brought live images of the sun, thanks to the Prescott Observatory and Matt Francis, uh, for the last month or so, we've been having almost weekly updates on these great solar storms showing prominences. So we thought it was a good idea to bring our SLU audience and the larger public uh, into seeing what the effects are. It's one thing to look at the sun and watch these storms as they leave the sun. It's another thing to actually see what happens when they arrive here on Earth. And that's what we're doing now. And these are all taken today of these uh, effects of electrons and protons, broken bits of atoms, as they're being uh, captured and interacting with Earth's magnetic field or atmosphere. And I was surprised, Bob, at rural forecast even being low. I thought, you know, our first night of viewing, I didn't expect much because the rural forecast was low. And, and when we began uh, taking pictures, uh, I was just astonished at that's a low, that the whole sky was filled with, with green light. And um, even tiny almost indiscernible fringes of red um, and with the pictures of course that that came out e even more dramatic so it's 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 really exciting to be here as part of the SLU team and being able to bring people uh, this kind of uh, this kind of spectacle while you can sit at home and see what's what's happening up here in Alaska and if you're a physics uh, geek uh, we can tell you that the light produced mostly by oxygen being uh, ionized or stripped of at least electrons, usually two, doubly ionized oxygen. And uh, when the electrons fall back into a position that they'd rather be, they give off light at 55, 77 angstroms in the green part of the spectrum, and also at about 6,400 angstroms in the red part of the spectrum. But it's the green that is more intense, that's visible to the eye. Those faint shades of red were very to the eye. That's right. And uh, you can see that uh, there's nothing, no lights in these, and uh, this auroral display and the effects of this giant sun is uh, expected to be a two-day affair. Now, the uh, University of Alaska and the Geophysical Institute rates the expected degree of auroral activity from a zero, meaning nothing, to one, uh, which means the same. Two is low, three is moderate, four is active, which is very rare, is high. 
Well, it was high. It was a, a five or a high, fortunately, when we got here. So we're very happy here at SLU to have captured the effects just when the, the greatest solar activity of the last month has arrived at our planet Earth. That's right. And just to put things in perspective for our viewers, we were standing out on a frozen airstrip, just a, basically a huge sheet of ice outside the activity here at the hot springs. And, um, you know, you, you stand out there and, and you begin taking pictures of just the background sky to calibrate your camera and then go in and, and sit in a warm meeting for the aurora to happen. When it does, it happens in a spectacular way. So this is, the, uh, this is our report from Alaska. We're uh, showing you a lot more of the pictures now, one after another, because the aurora keeps changing. There is an aliveness to it. Some of the changes are like rustling draperies. These curtains of light slowly change, and at other times there's very rapid pulsations as this material from the sun is uh, pulled in and interacts with Earth's magnetosphere. You can see the clear colors, these are visible to the naked eye, as this giant storm interacts with us. If we're a little more violent, then we'd have to start worrying about changing polar routes of jetliners so that passengers and crew would not receive too much radiation, and so that communications, the HF or high-frequency radio bands, would not be interrupted. Uh, there's also danger to pipelines and to uh, electrical power generators. We're reminded of the great blackout that plunged one quarter of Canada into darkness for a day and a half. That was back in March of uh, 1989. So these auroras are only symptomatic of a much more powerful overarching effect from the sun. And uh, it can do damage as well as create these gorgeous images that we're seeing. Uh, if we sound a little strange, it's because we've been up much of the night to uh, film these for SLU, and uh, we hope you enjoy that. We will be back showing you the sun again through the Prescott Observatory. Uh, is that not so, Matt? When to the lower 48. That's right. When we get back to uh, much warmer climates, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be happy to sit out there under the sun in my observatory and broadcast photos of the active of the sun. Yeah, generally it's degrees at night and it's like astronomy from a meat locker <laughs> but uh, we're glad to do it even though we're spending hours at a time with the equipment to bring these I think you'll agree these are just uh, beautiful images you can see the foreground mountains and trees so it's just to show you the perspective of uh, how large part of the sky uh, we're filming that bright star currently being seen that's the star Capella those of you who know the constellations a little bit, uh, to give you perspective of uh, what a large sweep of the heavens are being encompassed by uh, this night's display of the aurora. As I say, this just happened today. We're, we're, we're bringing you the current images from this. So, from Central Alaska, this is Matt Francis, Bob Berman for SLU. Hope you've been enjoying these, and uh, we'll keep watching. And if we uh, get some more for you, uh, we'll send you more. Otherwise, we'll give you updates on the sun as they happen. That's right. So uh, for now, hope you enjoyed them. For SLU, good night. Thank you.